The Justinian Plague, 541 to 549. It is 541 AD in Constantinople, and Emperor Justinian is throwing this really huge toga party to celebrate all his shiny new treasures from Egypt. Unknown to them, the crates carrying his new treasures were actually just Trojan horses filled with rats, and these rats weren't your regular rodents because they were severely infected with a bacterium called Yersinia pestis. Well, needless to say, everyone who came to that party went home with a souvenir from flea-infested rats. And what happened within the next few weeks would go on to be one of the scariest times in human history. The plague spread like teen drama gossip back in the elementary school, but this was way more deadly. The first symptom of the plague was a high fever that could literally fry an egg and lymph nodes that looked like you tried swallowing golf balls. People shivered like leaves during a hurricane, and this was promptly followed by agonizing, pus-filled buboes that appeared behind the ear, in the groin, or even in the armpits. It's as if your body decided to grow extremely painful grapes. If that wasn't enough torture, their lungs would also fill up with putrid fluid that made breathing in and out feel like a war. The condition was also accompanied by relentless diarrhea laced with blood that ripped through their insides, leaving them severely weak and dehydrated. And soon enough, people started dropping like flies. The death toll was so high that there was no space in the open fields to bury any more bodies. And soon, bodies were being stacked like blocks in a Jenga game. It is estimated that the plague killed an estimated 25 to 50 million people, which was basically more than half of the population at the time. 1918 flu, 1918 to 1920. It all started in 1918, when World War I was already in full force. People were already weary and strained, but then, as if life wasn't challenging enough, an invisible foe, the H1N1 influenza virus, arrived on the scene. The universe pretty much said, you think things are bad? Hold my cup. The first wave in the spring of 1918 was a joke compared to what came next. It was like the flu was warming up its vocal cords before unleashing a symphony of misery. The second phase of the flu came with full force, unlike the mild spring wave, and this particular wave spread very quickly, moving from continent to continent with the help of soldiers' troop movements. Soldiers packed in tight quarters were ideal hosts, and when they traveled, so did the virus. It was like a twisted version of airmail, quick, efficient, and deadly. The symptoms started off with a mild fever and chills, but before midday, you would feel as if you'd been run over 10 times by a truck and then dragged across a field. The fever and chills were accompanied by a cough that would rattle your entire body and leave you gasping for air like a fish out of water. The infection also attacked the lungs, and your skin would turn bluish from the lack of oxygen. This sniper flu struck anyone, anytime, filling hospitals faster than a flood. Doctors, who were already war-weary, watched as the virus spread like wildfire. And by the end of 1919, the global death toll was a staggering 50 to 100 million, far exceeding wartime casualties. Cities were put on lockdown, and public gatherings ceased. Mass graves became commonplace, and masks became the new it accessory. All of these were a desperate attempt to stop the tsunami, and although they were imperfect measures, every effort helped curb the spread of this deadly plague. HIV AIDS 1981 to current HIV first showed its ugly face in 1980 in the gay community, and because of this, people stigmatized the disease because they assumed it affected only a set of people. But boy, were they wrong. This invisible enemy started a slow-motion invasion, spreading silently and devastatingly through more communities worldwide, killing at least 600,000 people in the U.S. alone, and soon almost everybody was infected. People soon realized that HIV wasn't just transmitted through disease, seeing as even children got infected, and this only fueled the panic and fear. Now, if you tested positive for the virus, the first symptom would be an intense fever and fatigue that would be quickly followed by swollen lymph nodes. Then, after a while, this virus got silent and just quietly starts chipping away at your body's immune defense. HIV particularly targets your immune system by killing off all the white blood cells. You know, the very guys responsible for protecting your immune system from diseases. So by the time the virus was done, your body would basically be dumping ground for any disease looking to barge in. Now, the scariest thing about this virus wasn't the virus itself, but how vulnerable it would leave you open to every attack that wouldn't have caused such a big deal before. So if someone so much as sneezed or coughed beside you, you were basically a seamless Bluetooth connection for all the germs. In other words, something as simple as a minor cold could potentially be the end of your life. The Dancing Mania, 1518 
This would go down in history as one of the most bizarre outbreaks ever, because an activity that was supposed to be fun was literally killing people. You see, it all started in 1518 in a town called Strasbourg, where a woman named Mrs. Trafia suddenly erupted into an uncontrollable dance in public. People thought she was just having fun, but then more people joined the crazy show, and all efforts to stop them from dancing proved absolutely futile. Within a week, the streets were filled with dozens of people leaping, twisting, and contorting themselves like a freak circus show. Apparently, the whole town wasn't a dance marathon fueled by music, but they had been gripped by a pandemic called the Dancing Plague. It looked like everybody was under some twisted magic spell, and nothing could free them. The horrifying spectacle didn't stop, and days turned into weeks as weeks turned into months. People were dancing themselves to death as some collapsed from exhaustion, dehydration, or even heart attacks. The authorities were desperate for a cure to stop the dancing madness, and even resorted to whipping, rituals, and quarantining the dancers in a chapel to cast out the evil spirit. Some people were even drowned because they were accused of being demon-possessed. Someone even had the genius idea of calling in musicians to use music to cure a dance mania. Needless to say, that didn't help. Today, scientists believe that the mass hysteria was due to ergot poisoning, a fungus that can cause hallucinations and erratic behavior, which the victims probably got by eating poisoned rye bread. So the plague was basically a crazy case of a collective nervous breakdown. Sleeping Sickness, 1916 to 1927. If you lived in any part of sub-Saharan Africa in 1916, then you would have probably been among the millions who got infected by this absurd sickness. Unlike the gruesome brutality of the bubonic plague, this nightmare had a weird calm to it, attacking people with a sweet and savory slumber they might probably never wake up from, hence the name sleeping sickness. Now, if you were unfortunately bitten by the tsetse fly, which carried a parasite called trypanosoma responsible for the diseases, then the first symptoms would be grinding, pounding hammer in the brain kind of headaches, accompanied by intense fatigue and cold. As the parasite multiplied in your bloodstream, things would get really bad fast. It burrowed into your central nervous system and would essentially go and flip the switch in your brain that regulated sleep. Like you'd be falling into deep slumbers in the middle of the day and would wake up really, really tired, but then at night you wouldn't be able to sleep a wink. This led to severe fatigue, confusion, and dementia, and eventually you'd fall into a deep slumber, aka coma, and then possibly death. Everybody is affected by struggles to work or be productive as their days were stolen by an unending urge to sleep. Before you knew it, the plague had spread everywhere, and the whole community was basically zombies. It was like a deadly game of tag, and everyone the fly bit was it. The Sweating Sickness, 1485 to 1551. This particular plague first reared its ugly head in 1485, in a town called Tudor in England, when people suddenly started suffering from violent fevers and freezing cold, even though the weather outside was hotter than a jalapeno's armpit. If you were infected with this plague, you would be thirstier than a cactus in the desert. You would also be gulping down whole gallons of water like dehydrated fish. The excessive thirst and dehydration were also accompanied by racing hearts and extremely achy muscles. Soon you will be sweating buckets, literally, like you were living inside a burning furnace. At the peak of the crazy heat wave, delirium and confusion set in, and many kicked the bucket within a single day. The heat was so intense that the sweat from people's clothes could probably fill swimming pools. Seriously, if someone had bottled and sold it, Tudor could have had the world's first energy drink. The disease struck in waves, 1485, 1508, 1517, 1528, and finally 1551, each wave leaving the societies worse than they were. Medical knowledge back then was as useful as a chocolate teapot, so doctors were as clueless as everyone else, blaming witchcraft, bad air, and probably the alignment of the stars for good measure. Today, scientists are still not entirely sure what caused the sweating sickness, but there are theories that the now extinct virus was a particularly nasty strain of hantavirus. But whatever it was, it had people by their throats. People flocked in and out of hospitals, the death rate increased to a mighty high of 50%, graveyards just couldn't hold any more bodies. Those who survived lived in constant fear of the next wave. But surprisingly, the sweating sickness mysteriously vanished after the 1551 outbreak. While all these deadly plagues affected humanity so much, our Discord server is here to provide all the entertainment and joy you need. So join today and get all the exclusive updates. The New Guinea Kuru, 1950s. 
In Papua New Guinea, the four people believe that the dead bodies of their loved ones contained immense spiritual power. So during a funeral, they would gather around to consume the flesh of the dead, like an all-you-can-eat buffet. But instead of spiritual powers, these bodies contain prions, misfolded proteins that attack the brain, turning healthy tissue into a sponge-like mush. This simple practice, done out of love and respect for their townspeople, brought about a terrible plague called Kuru, which means shivers. At first, if the prions got into your body, it would attack your central nervous system, and the victims found it very hard to stand steady on their feet because they were constantly shaking. The involuntary shakes caused a severe lack of balance, and as the infection ate into their brains, they lost control of their whole body, and people found it difficult to understand what they were saying. In other words, they were basically trapped and prisoners within their own flesh. The four people had no idea what was inflicting such a horrific curse, and by the 1950s, Kuru had reached epidemic proportions, devastating entire communities, particularly women and children. With the help of anthropologists and medical researchers, it took years for them to finally connect the dots that the prions gotten from eating the brain and body parts of their dead tribesmen were the culprits behind the deadly plague of Kuru. With immense courage, the forest people abandoned the practice, halting Kuru's spread. Bombay Plague, 1896 Bombay, present-day Mumbai, was a thriving port city filled with people from all walks of life. This place was home to all ships from around the world. Unfortunately, one of these ships brought this bubonic plague to Bombay. The plague was spread by flea-infested rats that carried the famous bacterium Yersinia pestis. Dr. Acacio Gabriel Viegas noted the first sighting in Monvi, but would go on to spread with the speed of light. Now the overcrowded and unsanitary conditions of Bombay's slums turned the city into a hotbed for the disease. Jumping from household to household, these infected rats dropped this disease at each doorstep. Families got infected, and the once populous city of Bombay gradually started becoming empty as millions fled. Those who stayed and were infected were struck with a brutal fever that left them burning like embers, an agonizing swelling called buboes. The first signs of this dreadful plague were truly terrifying. But as this infection spread, victims suffered severe pain. Their digestive systems turned on them, and for every food they swallowed, they threw right up. Delirium became their normal companion as the disease wreaked havoc on their nervous system. The Bombay Plague was a merciless killer, claiming 10 million lives in India and racking up a body count of at least 1,900 people per week. It was like the Grim Reaper was working overtime. To combat this spread, the British colonial government implemented some quarantine measures, and Operation Clean the Slums began with the disease-infested rats were sentenced to death. Infected buildings and belongings were also destroyed. It was a classic case of out with the old, except this time it was more about survival than spring cleaning. Lassa Fever, 1969 to present Lassa fever was first detected in West Africa in 1969 after it struck down two missionary nurses in Nigeria. Because the initial symptoms of this disease mimic that of malaria, like high fevers, fatigue, and muscle aches, no one really paid any attention to it, because malaria was a very common sickness in Nigeria. However, when the malaria-like symptoms ended and Lassa fever showed its true colors, all attention turned to it. Basically, infected people had this throbbing, agonizing headache that felt like a thousand drummers were practicing in their heads. This was followed by an intense purging and vomiting session. It was like your mouth and anus were literally a one-way pipe, because as soon as the food was going in through your mouth, it was also leaving through your butthole. This viral fever was actually spread by the multi-mammoth rat, which carried the Lassa fever virus in its pee and poop. So essentially, if you lived in an area where rats were also citizens, then you were probably going to get infected, especially if you didn't have clean hygiene practices. Lassa fever also spreads if you, unfortunately, come into contact with the blood and bodily fluids of anyone who is infected. In the most horrifying stage of the virus, you would start bleeding from your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, which would eventually lead to organ failure and cardiac arrest. At the peak of the plague, over 5,000 deaths were recorded yearly. Although Lassa fever remains confined to West Africa, the government is making serious efforts to control the rodent population and educate communities about safe hygiene practices. Coca Listli Epidemic, 1545 to 1548. You've likely never heard of the Coca Listli Epidemic, which is probably because this particular plague literally wiped out everybody who could have talked about it. It was an absolute apocalyptic catastrophe. It attacked the native populations and was like an invisible enemy that destroyed their numbers like nothing they've ever encountered before. It began with severe headaches and extreme dizziness, like someone who hadn't eaten for one full month. 
You'd also quickly develop extreme high fever, and your skin would be covered in painful red blotches and bumps. And just when you thought it couldn't possibly get any worse, you'll start to bleed from everywhere. Eyes, nose, mouth, ears. And in addition to the bleeding, you'll also be pooping and vomiting, all while experiencing excruciating abdominal pain. It was like nature decided to throw a buffet of every possible misery. Millions of people succumbed to the wrath of this plague. Entire households died together in their houses, with no one left to bury them properly. Coca Listly killed over 15 million people, a crazy 80% of the native population, over just a few years. To put that in perspective, that's more than half the population of modern-day Mexico wiped out in under five years by one epidemic. It's as if Thanos snapped his fingers. But instead of dust, it was a mysterious, nightmarish disease that caused misery.